Warning, some contents may be disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. It had started out just like any other night, bored after work, looking for something to do until I felt tired enough to fall asleep. I had recently found a deep web browser and I decided that there was no time like the present, given that I had nothing better to do. I opened the application and started to surf the web. I mostly saw auction stuff for things that you probably wouldn't be able to buy in a normal store, but there were a few videos here and there, some of which were tagged as NSFL, not safe for life, meaning that whatever you see on that video is something most people don't want to see, and I decided that I'd skip out on that too. Eventually, I found a chat room. Seriously? We're on the deep web, and this is what I find. Oh no. I laughed to myself. Anything but a deep web omegle. With a chuckle, I clicked the link and entered the site. I was curious about who would go on the deep web simply to spend time in a chat room. When I entered the chat room, the video was blank. I waited patiently for a few seconds before asking nervously, Hello? I waited a few seconds more before it said that user 1372 was typing. Hello, how are you doing today? Hi, I said, making note of the fact that the person was typing and not speaking. I'm doing okay. How are you? Not bad, he replied. Just a bit bored. Same, I typed, and that's why I'm on here. What's your name? The user asked. Um, I couldn't answer. That was a red flag for me. I wasn't going to tell some stranger on the dark web my name. That's just asking for trouble. Sorry, I prefer not to say, I answered. That's okay, I understand. Yeah, safety reasons and stuff, you know. I know. But if you're concerned about safety, then you're in the wrong place, kiddo. There was a long silence after that. They had a point, but they're probably just being dramatic. Well, in that case, I'll just leave. I said with a smug grin. If they want to scare me, it would take more than that. But they're going to have to find someone else to entertain them. Or, so I thought. Until they replied. Good night, Adrian. My heart sank into my stomach. That was my name. How did he know my name? I immediately closed the browser, then my PC. My paranoia was starting to get to me. So I even pulled out my router cable, hoping that... Well, I don't even know what I was hoping for, but I was definitely scared. And just as I let out a sigh of relief, my phone vibrated. I looked at it on my nightstand, notifying me of a call. It was an unknown number. I reached out my hand and slowly declined the call. That couldn't have been them, right? Probably just a scam caller. Then my phone goes off again, still from an unknown number. There is a text to go along with the call. The text read, Pick up the phone, Adrian. With a shaky hand, I slowly pick up my phone and answer the call. Hello? I said nervously. Hello, Adrian. It was a text-to-speech voice. What? What do you want from me? Turn your computer back on 
and turn on the camera. The text-to-speech bot said. What do I do? I was panicking. I definitely did not want to turn on my camera. But what would they do if I didn't? They already got my name and my number after a few seconds. What else are they capable of? I shuddered at the thought. And as I stood there thinking, the bot repeated, Turn your computer back on and turn on your camera. This snapped me back to reality. Please, leave me alone. I try to say it in a strange voice, but to be honest, I could hear my voice waver. The bot repeated the same message again and again. Turn your computer back on and turn on your camera. Did I even have a choice at this point? This guy tracked me down and got both my name and my number in seconds. I don't want to know what else he would do if I disobeyed him. I slowly approached my computer. It felt like I was walking to an execution chair. I turned my computer on and with one deep breath in, I turned on my camera. I looked at my webcam and the green light that indicated that it was on. And after a moment of silence, my phone buzzed and I got a text message. Wave hello, kid. You're live. I was manually breathing at this point, but I managed to slowly raise my hand and wave it back and forth. And from then on, my life was hell. I would get non-stop text messages in the morning at 4 a.m. until I woke up and replied. The text sent were gory videos, which he'd ask me questions about to ensure that I watched them. And after a few days, it got worse. He started asking me to do some random task, like drawing a picture of a whale on my skin with permanent marker, driving to random places, and eating disgusting food. And each time... He wanted a photo of it to prove that I completed the task that he gave me. Eventually, I grew tired of his games. Consequences be damned. Whatever he could do to me, I didn't care anymore. I was done being his toy. And the next time that he texted me an order, I simply told him to go F himself. Because I wasn't going to take any more shit from him. After the reply, user 1372 went silent, and after a minute, I felt a swell of pride in myself for standing up to him, and just when I was about to go and take a well-deserved nap, my phone buzzed again. No doubt, user 1372 was upset, but whatever he decided to do, I'll face it head on. Or... So I thought. He didn't say anything. He simply sent two images. A picture of my parents' house and a picture of my sister's house. He didn't need to say a word and I understood his message as clear as day. What do you want? I asked. Go to the stairs. My worry grew. What did he want this time? What twisted thing did he want me to do this time? I slowly exited my bedroom and to the top of the stairs. I looked down the flight of the stairs with dread. My breathing became heavy. What did he want me to do? My phone buzzed. No doubt, his new orders for me. The reply was a single word. Jump. My heart hammered in my chest. I knew that I had to do it, but the fear held me solid. I thought about my family. My older sister just gave birth. My little nephew is so innocent. I would rather die than let a sick freak like this anywhere near him. And with that thought in my mind, I jumped from the top of the stairway. I woke up in the hospital a few days later. Apparently, my neighbors heard me scream while I jumped and called the police to investigate. 
and they found me unconscious at the bottom of the stairs with blood coming from my head. They rushed me to the hospital, and other than a major concussion, there seems to be no short-term effects. But I'll have to wait and see if the injury will cause long-term problems. I never got a text from user 1372 after that. I'm not sure what happened or why he stopped messaging me, but I'm thankful that he did. And years later, I found out that there were a lot of people who went through the same things that I did, being messaged by people online who threatened them to do harmful things. And many victims didn't make it. They called it the Blue Whale Challenge. I don't know why user 1372 stopped what he was doing, but I am grateful to still be alive. Hitman page call. Sent in by Anonymous. This happened a couple of years ago. I don't remember the exact month or year. But it couldn't have been just a few years ago because Bitcoin was at or near its peak. I used to spend a lot of time in the deep web. Mostly on forums and things like that. But never on anything that was explicitly illegal. I know. That sounds incredibly convincing, right? Believe it or not, there are pages on the deep web that are good for entertainment. Some of them are in a grey area as far as ethics go. But again, not explicitly illegal. And some of them only become illegal if you take action on the page. I think. Look, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't really know. Anyways, I was browsing pages without intent to actually do anything on them. And I was just perusing through some random onion links to see what interesting stuff I could find. After checking out some random pages that sold things that were definitely not legal, I found a page that, well, again, definitely was not legal. From the start on the page, I knew this page was serious. The name of the page was something like L.H. Oswald Solutions, an obvious allusion to Lee Harvey Oswald the man who assassinated JFK. Honestly, seeing that made me chuckle. Something about using Oswald's name for the page was genuinely humorous. After reading their information, it was pretty clear why they used that as the name. The entire page was meant for users to pay Bitcoin and hire a hitman. The page explained they had top-tier men working for them, and price categories as well. The product started at intimidation, and included things like arson, murder designed to look like a failed robbery, and had other tiers that were meant to make it look like an accident. The last one was the most expensive, obviously, and they gave scenarios on how it could happen, including hiking incidents, accidental drownings, and car troubles. Now, I had no intent on doing anything on this page, other than reading what they had to say, mostly for entertainment. But then I got to the bottom of the main page. They had a full-on legal disclosure, which I thought was hilarious, that explained what actions could be taken if they failed and laid out their personal guarantee that they could find anyone and everyone without fail. Immediately after this was a small note at the bottom. We can find anyone. And we can prove it. Click here for proof. Now, I know what you're thinking. No sane person would ever click that link. And no one could be so stupid to click it intentionally. I didn't want to. But I had to. I had to know how they would guarantee that they could find anyone. So, I clicked the button, and the page switched over to a plain black site with a smiley face, and an hourglass icon that indicated it was loading. After a few seconds... The hourglass turned into a check mark. At first, I thought that was it. It was just going to sit there with a check mark, and that was it. Then, much to my surprise, my cell phone started ringing. Obviously, I was freaking out inside, but I answered the phone anyway. I said, Hello? The voice on the other end was digitized, thankfully. It basically said, Here's your proof. 
Thank you for considering our services. A few times, then hung up. I was actually grateful that it was a robocall, and not a real person, but I was also terrified that it was able to find my number and call me. This was enough to tell me they weren't screwing around, and that I need to never go to their website, or question whether or not those hitmen sites are legit, ever again. If you've grown up playing video games, You've probably had to bear your parents telling you in all manner of assorted ways how video games rot you. One more unbelievable than the last, no doubt. If not, then believe me when I say that should the envy of all those who had to deal with what I describe above fall upon you, you'd be crushed into a paper-thin pancake along with the rest of the planet. Gaming really is everywhere now, and despite the wide-ranging opinions of others, I have to say that it is an art form that I truly respect. I was a gamer. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Two unreasonably large monitors, idolizing ninja, a desk setup that would give anyone with epilepsy an instant seizure, a pair of headphones that look as though they were meant to protect my ears, from the sound of large-scale kiloton explosions. Wasting an entire weekend editing dumbass Fortnite gameplay like it was a would-be Hollywood masterpiece, when in reality, getting people to watch it would be hard enough when it's free, let alone if you charge them. I also enjoyed playing some classic games on the side on my dad's old NES and SNES, which, in my mind, balanced out by negating the effects of modern media, and this somehow made me a more well-rounded individual, but which in all likelihood didn't do shit. But I digress. You, reader, might be wondering by now why I referred to my gaming self in the past tense. Well, that's because what I mentioned above is all in the past. I am 18 years old as of writing this, and I haven't gamed in almost three years. So what do you think happened? Did I get addicted and was shipped off by my parents to some institution to get cleansed? No. And before you jump the gun, I have to stop you right now and just say that no, I did not get scared straight, as some parents like to say. I mean... At least not in the traditional sense. The event in question happened around April 2020. Lockdown. I was a stupid ass 16 year old and to me, lockdown was the blessing from God that I had been constantly nagging him for only he knows how long. I had unlimited free time to game to my heart's content and I resolved that I would make my gaming channel with a grand total of 5 subscribers, all of whom I knew in my real life, take off and join the ranks of Ninja and Markiplier, make millions, quit school, and prove to my dumb parents, who I love very much now, how profitable gaming was, and how I wasn't just rotting my brain all this time. See? I wasn't exaggerating when I said that I was a stupid ass 16 year old. So, instead of doing my homework, all of my time was spent screen recording the worst gameplay of Fortnite and PUBG imaginable, while my crackling voice commented and screamed every once in a while, editing random and sudden zoom ins and making funny jokes and, Christ, you get the picture. Anyhow, despite two months of effort, I had made a grand total of one dollar from all of my videos combined and gained only one subscriber, whom I also knew in real life. And needless to say, I was disheartened. Was this the moment I decided to stop being a gamer? Was what scared me straight is the cruel dream-destroying reality of this world? Nope, 
I wasn't ready to give up. I still blindly believed in my dream. School had just ended, and I decided that my summer that year would be spent giving gaming my all again. After all, I had to justify all the Fs that I had somehow gotten. Anyway, I remember lying on my bed one random day and thinking hard. Quite the challenge for a little old 16-year-old me. I knew that to get subscribers, I had to do something niche. Something that no one else was really doing, if at all. Something unique that was sure to gain a following and that no one else could copy. And as I lay there in bed, it suddenly hit me. I should play games that no one else was playing. But by that I don't mean games that were unpopular. I mean, games that no one else had access to. It was around evening when I logged into the dark web through Tor. Now, before I continue, let me explain something about the dark web. 99% of what you've heard about it on whatever creepy ass animated story or fake creepy pasta you've listened to is false. I hope you're not surprised. They're false because they portray the dark web as a minefield that will pretty much mess you up immediately. A place full of drugs and hitmen and messed up individuals. And while you can find those things on there, you don't just stumble onto them as a first timer like all these stories talk about. But they are right about the list of dead onion links but you can call bullshit when they say they randomly clicked a link and found themselves in a digital hell of some kind. The dark web, if I had to compare it to something, is a lot like 4chan, just an endless collection of message boards. It's actually pretty boring because you can't just access the hard drugs and hitmen and the snuff videos right off the bat. It's like being admitted into a secret society. The ones who are in scope you out after you've shown interest on a message board and determine whether or not they should let you in. They then basically hack your private life for two reasons. One, to make sure you're someone who can be trusted. And two, to use it as a leverage in case you decided to snitch. Besides that, it's just weirdos talking on forums about whatever bullshit's going on in their mind or you and just ordering some weed. Basic stuff, really. Well, I'm no script kitty, so needless to say, I knew my way pretty well around these parts. I used a non-window operating system, disabled all my scripts in Flash, booted up Tails, had a custom VPN that I had someone whip up for me, and the whole 100 yards. On the day in question, a hot summer day, I logged into a chat room and posted a query asking about any interesting games that I could play. Shit that I couldn't find on Steam or on the surface web. And the conversation went something like this. Query. Yo, I'm looking for some interesting video games to play. Shit, you can only find here in this part of the internet. And it wasn't long before I received a message back from some dude who had a handlebar, John. John said, What do you mean? I answered, I've got a freaking game addiction, and stuff on Steam no longer floats my boat, I want to know if I can find any niche, good stuff here. John answered, Ah, how interesting. I can tell that you're an amateur minus script kitty. As you know, games are an expression of humanity. As is this corner of the internet, people want to express themselves, but sometimes, those expressions are not appreciated on the surface web, so... They post their artwork here, where like-minded individuals dwell. Games are no exception, and I can send you a link if you want. 
I answered. What, you gonna show me some sad Satan shit? I already know that, bro. Stupid ass freaking game. I don't want my precious PC to get any freaking viruses from something a freaking pleb made. John answered. No, no. This is the real deal. The community. Suffered quite a reputation blow from the leak of that game. A real piece of shit made by a piece of shit who had no feel for art. Luckily, its developers have been working hard to cleanse the palais of us, the consumers, from that shit fest. Are you still interested? Of course, I said. And just like that, he sent me a link and logged off. Christ, this link was something that I had never seen before. It was a dot onion link, but everything before that was just a jumbled mess of letters, words, numbers, digits, random punctuation marks, and a few weird-ass lines that made text distorted. It wasn't so much as a link as much as it was a paragraph of the strangest collection of text imaginable. I'm sure everyone reading this knows where the hell this is going. With, and I am talking in a very literal, no exaggeration manner, absolutely no freaking hesitation, I clicked the link. And just like that, I'd unwittingly stepped into hell, just like the so many unfortunate protagonists of all those fake dark web stories. The website took three solid Mississippi seconds to load, and did so just as I was about to hop out. And just thinking about it gives me the impression that damn thing knew that I was about to leave and didn't want me to. The screen immediately went black, and just when regret was about to hit me, a text box came up. Welcome, dear player, to our humble website. We appreciate your patronage and hope you will be able to enjoy our extensive collection of free games made by the finest in the industry. Happy playthrough. Sincerely, Maud. The message made me feel uncomfortable. I know, right? Countless times of wafting through this cesspool of humankind and a polite message is what gets under my skin? Exactly. My parents were asleep, and I just drank a can of Monster and a can of Red Bull, and I was given the prospect of entertainment until dawn. And so, I took it. I clicked on the search bar, but saw that I couldn't actually search anything. Instead, a list of categories popped up. What were the categories? Rape, murder, torture porn. Nope. None of those. Every single one was plain as can be. Pov. Action. Suspense. That kind of stuff. You could select multiple categories and then hit search. I chose the following combination for my first game. 2D. Detective. Mystery. Choice-based. Simple, right? I pressed enter and waited. It seemed to last forever, but finally, the churning wheel of loading disappeared and I was met with a retro home screen. The title read in all caps, Interrogation of Phineas Wheatley. In a strangely well-chosen color palette that didn't make me want to vomit. And needless to say, the 16-year-old me was stoked. I thought that I just hit a video game jackpot. Fantastic games to niche for the mainstream, all at my fingertips for absolutely free. In case you've been wondering, no, I don't have any footage of these games. My plan was to master their gameplay and then record it so that I wouldn't embarrass myself like I had done before. Yes, I do regret it tremendously, but what are you going to do? Sue me? This game, unlike a standard NES one, allowed me to use my mouse, so with that, 
I click start. The screen went black and a new image loaded on my monitor. It looked like a photograph, which had been pixelated. Imagine the ending picture of the original Resident Evil 2 on the PS1, which shows what happened to all of the characters after the main storyline concludes. And that will give you a pretty good idea of what I saw. A young man with a poker face seemed to be sitting before a metal table, utterly motionless. And below him was the word, Ask Him. And without warning, two black bars with white letters appeared under it. The one on my left read, Why he called you there? While the other on my right read, How he's feeling? I was dumbfounded, so I just clicked the option on the right because I was curious. The two bars along with Ask Him disappeared, and a large rectangular speech bubble with an arrow pointed at this Phineas's mouth replaced them. I'm feeling fine, detective. Thank you for showing concern and for arriving so quickly. The large speech bubble disappeared, and the Ask Him prompt came back up again, but now there was only one bar under it, the one that said, Why he called you there? I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't intrigued at that moment. I expected to come across some sort of sad Satan clone, or morbid images, or whatever shit idiots think would be fitting for the dark web. Instead, I had seemingly stumbled upon a hidden gem. I clicked the bar and the speech bubble came right back up. I know I am going to die, detective. I know he will kill me. I find it only appropriate that I give my last confession before I am taken. The speech box disappeared and two bars came up again. The one on the right now read, Who he thinks wants to kill him. And the other on the left read, Why he killed Sam. I was tempted to just choose right, but I just really wanted to get things over with. And the following are all the responses that I chose with his answers in bold. Why he killed Sam? As you very well know, Sam was my first time. I wanted my first time to be special, so I chose Sam because he was special. He was that simple. How he killed Sam? Come on, detective. Surely you must know already. How he killed Sam. Alright, alright. As you wish. I knew Sam lived home alone, so I enacted my perfect murder. The perfect murder isn't about how you kill someone. It's about how you cover it up. And I knew that disposal would be my biggest problem. So I planned things out. I started to work at a taxidermy shop in town with my son, under the guise that I was being a good supporter for him to get some good extracurricular activity for his college applications. Mr. Flank, the owner of the shop, mainly made animal skeletal models and then shipped them internationally to institutes of education. You know how he'd extract the bone so cleanly? There are special beetles called their mested beetles that eat only flesh. People like Mr. Flank have entire containers full of them. They just throw in the carcass part and wait for the beetles to eat it clean. I found a big enough tray and stole some beetle eggs from Mr. Flank and I raised them all on my own patiently. And once they were fully grown, I put an ad on Craigslist for a child skeleton model. After all that was said and done, I just lured Sam down, killed him, and threw him into the vat. A week I waited, and the beetles had done their job. I then shipped the skeleton off and out of my life for good. Simple as that. I then just burned the beetles along with Sam's clothes buried his organs out in the forest along with a few worms for good measure. And that was that. 
It was as if nothing had ever happened. How he got caught? Just thinking about it makes me mad. Turns out, you have to use hydrogen peroxide to preserve bones so they don't yellow over time. What happened in my case is that the person who received the skeleton was a medical expert and immediately realized that he just received the real child skeleton. The rest, I'm sure you know. A fun experiment that ended up biting me in the ass. The bar on the right side disappeared, and the remaining bar now read, Why he needed to speak to you? And this is the response I got when I answered. You see, detective, I'm afraid. I've been a tad dishonest with everyone. I'll cut to the chase and just say that little Sam wasn't my first, nor my second, nor my third. He was number 31. Normally, I just cut up the bones and bury them. Sam, on the other hand, was a special case, as I thought it would be a neat idea for me to ship my friends out. But alas, look at where it got me. Where the hell the others are? I'll be frying tomorrow, so I might as well say. I ain't telling you, squat chief. Just wanted you to know. You can doubt me, but you can't doubt all those other missing posters. I am a fair man, however. And I will say that I have mapped all of their coordinates on a special sheet of paper that you can only find in Genesis. That's all, detective. The screen immediately went black, leaving me in total darkness for a moment. And when it came back up, I saw that the style of the game had changed. It now looked like... Earthbound. I saw a sprite that looked like a stereotypical detective, trench coat and hat and all, standing outside what seemed to be a police station. The palette of my surroundings was a dark blue, and it appeared to be raining heavily. I used my keyboard and found that I could move around by pressing the standard arrow keys. On the far corner of the screen was an arrow that pointed to something beyond it, and I followed it. I found myself being guided through a deserted town, and without warning, the arrow suddenly pointed up. It was a house. A really quaint house. I entered it and the screen went black for a moment before I found myself inside the house. And I have to say, it was a real pig hut. It gave off the impression of a drug den, a place even pigs wouldn't want to live in. I walked around and found that I could explore the whole house. The arrow was gone at this point, so I didn't have a clue where I was supposed to go next. But as I passed through a hanging portrait, the only thing in the whole place, a prompt appeared imploring me to inspect it. I did so, and a pixelated photograph appeared, just like how the game was before. It showed a middle-aged man who I immediately recognized as Phineas. He was standing behind a young man who looked a bit like him, albeit younger and I understood now that I was in his house, and it didn't take me long to realize that the basement was where I needed to go. I found another door, and I was able to enter it. Now, my detective sprite was in a large and dark basement. It was complete and utter silence throughout the entire game, but I only noticed it at this point. I walk around for a bit, but no prompt appeared. But then, I noticed a container, a large sprawling one, right in the middle of the room, and it caught my eye. I approached it, and the long-awaited prompt appeared. I pressed it, but then, without warning, another sprite suddenly came out of nowhere. The screen went black, and I found myself in the same style of gameplay as before. I recognized the sprite that appeared before me as Phineas's son. The prompt read, What are you doing here? 
there was only one bar, which is the one I clicked. I came here to find the truth. The screen went black for a second and the image changed. I was now facing the container. The screen went black for another second and the container was open in the picture that came up. Even though it was pixelated, the detail almost made me vomit. It was another body, fresh, covered by what I assumed to be beetles. A single white piece of paper lay on it. The screen went black and I could now see the paper. There were locations and coordinates on the paper, about five, and the screen went black and I was now facing Phineas's son again. But now, he was holding a gun pointed right at me. I knew Daddy wouldn't go quietly like I told him to, he said. And while I am sorry for doing this, Mr. Forum, I would be remiss if I didn't reiterate that, unlike my father, I am not made for jail. I take after my mother after all. The screen went orange and then blank. Two prompts appeared. Play again. And exit. I clicked exit, and I laid back in my chair and let everything that happened sink in. It really was like a high. Like drinking yourself to a stupor on good alcohol instead of the cheap kind. It felt good, but I had this feeling that grew in that particular high for me. This knowing feeling that I just had to act on if I wanted to relax. I went to my other monitor, the one logged into the surface web, and typed Phineas Wheatley in Google. I just expected some forum links discussing the game, but instead, I got an eyeful of news reports and archives about Phineas Wheatley, the Granville Flesh Reaper. I read everything. I read how he'd kill a local and sweet little innocent boy and had nearly gotten away with a perfect crime. I read how the detective who last spoke with him has never been found. And I read how he was survived by one son, Michael Wheatley, who preferred to stay anonymous. My high went from me feeling as though my skull was full of clouds to feeling like my brain had been replaced by a bowling ball. I rubbed my eyes hard and wondered what I should do. Those coordinates were surely fake, I told myself. Just the fan fiction of a serial killer aficionado. That's all there was to it. And like a junkie for a fix, I was hungry for more. My senses were screaming at me, but I refused to listen. 3D, POV, Suspense, Exploration. And I hit Enter, and just like before, my screen went black before a menu popped up. Voyeur's POV. The only other thing was a Start button, which I also clicked with no hesitation. The screen went dark and a loading wheel appeared with the words searching for a server below it. I waited, honestly oblivious to what I was about to be thrown into, and the spinning loading wheel disappeared, and a view appeared on my monitor. It was a first-person perspective of a backyard at night. At the bottom of the screen, there was a piece of text which read, Quebec, Canada. I am ashamed to admit it, but I really did feel intrigued especially by how realistic the graphics look to me, not just for a free game on the internet, but for a video game in general. I tried moving around with my mouse and keyboard keys, but nothing worked. It was only then that I noticed the bar at the bottom of my screen. A text bar. In the bar, I, without much thought, typed in, Go to Shed. To my surprise, the camera turned and started to move towards the shed in the far corner of the yard. I typed, Open Shed, and a gloved hand appeared on the screen and opened it. 
Enter shed. Take dagger. Exit shed. It felt exhilarating, much better than until dawn. A true update of old text adventure games. The character was doing everything I told him to. Enter house. Go upstairs. The camera followed all of my commands. I was now in a bedroom. A girl about my age, the one I'd seen in the family pictures on my way up the stairs, lay sleeping before me. She seemed so real on my screen that I had to blink, and a prompt came up at the very moment as I sat in my dark room. End it? Right now, all I can do is swear on my honor, my life, and the lives of my entire family that I thought that prompt meant to end the game. That and that only is why I typed, yes. The power plug of my monitor was pulled, not a moment after I witnessed the gloved hand plunge the knife deep into the chest of that girl. The last thing I saw in that damn thing were her eyes fluttering open in an instant. Like a dam, they held back a contagious fear that no one, certainly not her, should ever feel. On the floor I collapsed, and on the floor I cried, and on the floor I slept. The last thought that went through my head before I lost consciousness was, it's just a game. But my nightmare certainly didn't want me to believe that. I awoke that morning, about four hours later, and I barely had the strength to stand up again. Seeing my monitors made tears come to my eyes again, and I still didn't know why. I tried to calm down and thought that I knew the perfect way to do so. I turned on my other monitor and hopped on Google again. My previous search related to Phineas Wheatley, inflicting a whole other wave of disgust back. I just searched Quebec, Canada and went to news. And what do you think I found as the top story? A news article that featured the house that I had seen at night in that game. Only now, it was covered by police tape, and one of the family photographs that I had seen inside that house while climbing the long staircase glared at me from behind my screen. The girl, smiling brightly in the photograph, had been killed survived only by the others in that picture. I know I'm next if I report this. I know they know everything they need to know about me. All I can do for now, before I turn in the evidence, is to be a son that my parents can be proud of, so that when I am taken, I can at least leave knowing that their time raising me had not been wasted. To you, you know who you are reading this. It has already been done. There's nothing you can do. Your operation will receive quite the blow, much like playpen. I'm ready for you. Just please don't go after my loved ones. They have nothing to do with this. If you can promise me that, I'll go quietly. Mom, Dad... I'm sorry. Love, James. This was literally the most scared I've ever been. Okay, let's start from the start. I'm a night owl, you see. What do you do, wasting hours away from sunset to sun up? Browse the internet. Duh. Not like there's anything else to do growing up in a shitty little town in rural New South Wales. I don't know at what point I began pushing the boundaries with that, but at some stage, I progressed from flipping through the depths of Reddit to navigating the ever-mysterious dark web. Months, I browsed with no incident. You actually find some pretty weirdly interesting stuff on there. You just got to know what to stay away from. There's also 
hours of mind-numbingly boring nothingness too, but eh. Anyway, I'll jump ahead to the night my story takes place. I'm just browsing, as usual, flicking through the wiki and whatnot, and I come across a site I've never seen before, which I mean is pretty common on the deep web. The website was called Chat Roulette. It was all red and white in colour, and in the middle of the screen, there was a pixelated icon that looked like a set of dice with a click prompt reading, Roll to Connect. Okay, I click the dice, and after a quick dice roll sound effect, I find myself in a chat room straight out of 2001. Basically, it was just a red box up top with a little greater than symbol indicating where the chat history was going to show up, and a small box for typing down below. This was odd, but okay, I'll play. I type hi, and I wait. Ding! Your bedroom window is open. What? Ding! Don't move. I kept laying on my bed, eyes firmly fixed on the screen. I noticed in the reflection that yes, my bedroom window really was open. I quickly typed back, Who is this? How did you know? Ding! You need to do exactly as I say. Do not move. They'll hear you. What? Who will hear me? Ding! The man outside your window. I froze. Literally, froze in place. Were there really men outside my window? About to climb through and do God knows what. Ding! Carefully get up. Do not make a sound. Slowly, make your way to your window. Close it as quickly as you can, and then run to another room. Any room in the house that you feel is secure. Go! I did what the stranger told me to do. I slowly climbed out of my bed, taking care not to step on any loose floorboards or cause any sudden noises at all. I made it to my window, and I quickly slammed it shut. I then ran to the bathroom down the hall slamming my bedroom door behind me. The whole time I was running and hiding in that bathroom, I was just waiting for that inevitable sound of glass smashing, mental images of masked intruders sliding in through my window from the darkness outside. I sat in that bathroom for what must have been at least four hours or so before finally making my way out, carefully. Ever so slowly, I tiptoed my way back to my bedroom. I practically army crawled my way over to my window, lifting my head very carefully. I peered out into the backyard and I saw nothing. I head back over to my laptop at this point to ask what the hell was going on, when finally I notice it the little green indicator light right next to my webcam. My camera had been on. This freaking weirdo had been looking through my webcam, seen my bedroom window was open, and decided to play some stupid elaborate prank, probably broadcasting my panicked reactions to the rest of his dark web weirdo buddies. All's well that ends well, I guess. The whole thing turned out to be a dumb joke. But, I do stand by what I said at the beginning. It was the most scared that I have ever been in my entire life. Stay off the deep web. This guy was rather harmless. But you never really know who might be watching you. My best friend David and I were really into violence and gore. 
We watched all the bloodiest and most insane movies that we could possibly find. And in our desperate search to find more extremely violent movies, we started running out of things to watch. The quality in movies we were forced to watch continued to get worse and worse until they could no longer satisfy our need to see over-the-top action and death. That is until... David came up with what he thought was a genius idea. Everything we were watching was fake. What better way to satisfy our need to see violence than to see the real thing? David had heard about a thing called the dark web from his brother, where we could find videos of people being brutalized in various different ways. No more terrible special effects and no more red food coloring. He told me that he'd talk to his brother, find out how to access it, and be at my house the next day to get started. He ran home in search of his brother, and I spent my day watching awful horror movies on Netflix. The next day, I woke up to my cell phone ringing. Dude, I'm outside, get up! It was spring break, and my mother was out of town on business, so I had the house all to myself. I got out, put some clothes on, and headed for the door to let David in. And before I could even get the door open completely, David shoved his way inside with a huge grin on his face. I know how to do it, man. I know how to get on the dark web. I watched some stuff last night and... It was nuts, bro. Exactly what we're looking for. David said, his grin getting wider by the second. Sounds good, man. Let's get started. I said, wiping the crust from my eyes and following David as he led the way back to my room. He sat down at my computer and immediately pulled up a web page that was prompting him to install something. This stuff isn't going to fry my computer, is it? No, my brother said he uses it all the time. It'll be fine, totally safe. David said, not taking his eyes off the screen. He explained to me that his brother met some people on the dark web that provided him with a link to a site with exactly the kind of stuff that we'd be interested in seeing. He opened up a folded up sheet of paper from his pocket with a dot onion address scribbled on it. He typed it into the Tor browser that he had just downloaded and what looked like an empty black screen showed up. I thought he might have typed the link incorrectly, but he started to move the cursor around the page slowly until he discovered a little blue hyperlink that read, Enter at your own risk. David clicked on the link and the site took a minute to load up. When the web page finally opened, the background was black and all the words were in red. In big letters at the top of the page, it said, Mercy Kill. Dismembered arms and legs that had blood dripping from each of them formed together to create the letters and underneath the title of the website was a horizontal bar of categories to choose from. Torture, porn, kidnapping, animals, and the list went on. There was also a submit button, which, I assume, was how people uploaded their videos onto the website. After looking over the categories for a bit, we found one that we thought we would have what we were looking for. We clicked on Murder. Once again, the page took quite a while to load. When it did, there were three black boxes one after the other with titles under each of them. There were play buttons hovering in the middle of each box. The title of the first video was This Little Piggy Went Home Followed by Take Me Out to the Ball Game and the last one, Russian Roulette with a Twist. 
The videos had no preview screen or thumbnail, so we had no idea what we were in for before clicking play. David decided to click on Russian Roulette first. It seemed like the safest bet since we knew what Russian Roulette was. The video buffered for a moment and then began. In this video, there was a man sitting in a chair. The room had a white tile floor and a white sheet hung behind the man. There was a white table in front of him with six handguns laid out on top of it. The man was wearing only boxer briefs and was covered in sweat. He had one hand tied to the chair, but the other was free. He looked young, but definitely older than us, and he was very skinny, like he hadn't eaten in weeks. We saw the man's mouth move, but there was no sound. And David quickly turned my computer speakers on, and we could hear a man speaking. A game. There are six guns on the table. One of them has a bullet in it. The rest of them do not. Pick one. Put it in your mouth and pull the trigger. Choose correctly, and I'll let you go. A voice said from behind the camera. The man in the chair reached out with his shaky free hand and grabbed the gun in the middle of the table. He brought the gun up to his face, stared down at the barrel, then closed his eyes. He whispered something inaudible to himself, put the gun in his mouth, and pulled the trigger. The sound that emitted from my speakers almost made my heart leap out of my chest, and the sheet behind the man was sprayed with blood and brain matter. His head whipped back and then forward quickly, slamming into the table with a loud bang. And soon, the white tabletop had run red with blood. From behind the camera, we could hear the other man chuckling to himself, escalating slowly into a light maniacal laugh. He finally walked out in front of the camera. He had his back turned to the camera and walked over to the table and began removing the clips from each of the remaining handguns. He gathered them all in his hands and brought them up close for the camera. The man was bald and had a plain white face mask on. He showed us the tops of the clips, and there was a bullet loaded every one of them. I lied, he yelled, before returning to his loud villainous laughter. The man in the mask walked back over to the body and ran his hand through the dead man's hair slowly. He placed his finger inside the hole that the bullet had left in the back of the man's head with a disgusting squishing noise. And that was the end of the video. And although I was a little shocked by the gruesomeness of the video, it was exactly what we were looking for. I felt sympathy for the people being killed in these videos, but I tried to convince myself that these were just very high quality films and we continued on to watch the other two videos. This little piggy went home, consisted of a woman strapped to a metal table, getting each of her toes cut off with pliers, one by one, and having them fed to her by an obese naked man, while her mouth was held open by a dental mouth opener. And take me out to the ball game, was a video of a man in a baseball uniform who was bound to a wooden chair. He looked like he had already been severely beaten, and there were two men, each with a baseball bat in hand, standing in front of him in what looked like some sort of shed. You like touching little boys, huh? One of the men yelled at the tied-up man. The man in the uniform began to say something when one of the other men brought a baseball bat down with incredible force onto the man's crotch. The uniformed man began crying out in unspeakable pain as the other two men continued to hit him with ferocious swings in the kneecaps and stomach. And finally, when the man was beaten to the point of near unconsciousness, they decided to put him out of his misery.
They both hit him one time each, as hard as they could on the head. And I could hear the crushing blows connect with a skull. They then poured gasoline all over the man, sparked the match, and then torched him. They threw both bats into the fire, and the video came to an end. After watching those three videos, we were entertained. David began to scroll down to bring the next three. When a small ad appeared in the bottom right corner of the screen, Would you like to subscribe for exclusive daily videos for free? Read the out of place looking ad. There were two buttons that showed up when David brought the cursor over the ad. Yes or no. And before I could say anything, David had already selected yes. Another window loaded up and it had two blank bars to enter a home address and an email address. And David began to type my email address when I spun him around in the chair to face me. What the hell are you doing? Are you crazy? I said. Come on, man. Exclusive videos. That sounds sick. David said with the same stupid grin he had on his face when he walked in earlier. If you want to sign up, use your email and address. I don't want my info posted somewhere on the dark web. Whatever, man. David said, closing out the window. And just when we were about to continue watching more videos, there was a knock at the door. David seemed to pay it no mind and continued scrolling through the web page. I got up and headed to the front door. And when I opened the door, it was David's mother looking a bit frustrated. Hey, Anthony, is David here? She said with a smile, even though I could tell that she was upset with David about something. I figured she might have found out from his brother that he was messing around the dark web. Yeah, I'll go get him for you, I said, gesturing her to come in and heading back towards my room. I opened the door and once again, he didn't seem to notice me. When I put my hat on his shoulder, he got startled and jumped. Hey man, your mom's here and she doesn't seem happy, I said as David spun around his chair. Damn snitch, David said under his breath, confirming my suspicions. Well, I'll see you later. We did our handshake and I walked him out. His mother had gone back outside to wait for him in the car and I waved goodbye to them and off they went. When I got back to my room, I saw that David had closed out everything on my computer and I hadn't watched him closely enough to know how to open it back up myself. I decided to grab a bowl of cereal and hang out watching YouTube for the rest of the day. And about two hours after David left my house, I received a new email notification on my phone. I selected the app and I saw that the email had nothing in the subject line and was sent from an encrypted email address. And upon opening the email, I was greeted with bold red letters that said, Congratulations! Thank you for subscribing to our daily exclusive videos. You will be sent an exclusive video from one of our users every day. You are free to unsubscribe at any time. Estimated delivery tomorrow by 6 p.m. Damn it, I said out loud to myself. David had signed me up while I was out of the room. Now, my email and address could be floating around anywhere on the dark web for anybody to see. What the hell was going to be delivered tomorrow? I thought it was just videos. Why can't they email them to me? I texted David calling him an asshole for doing something so stupid without my permission, but I didn't receive a response, and eventually, I got over it and continued my day as usual. I stayed up late playing video games with a couple of my other friends, and I eventually headed to bed. 
The next day I woke up around 3 p.m. I texted David to see if he wanted to come over and watch some more videos. I was hoping he would say yes so that he could teach me how to access the webpage on my own. But again he didn't answer. I figured his mother took his phone away to punish him. My mother had left a list of things for me to do around the house and one of them was to check the mail every day. So, I walked outside to the end of the driveway and took a quick look around when I saw an ambulance and two cop cars parked in front of a house a few doors down. I could see some yellow caution tape, but everything beyond it was blocked by a car. I didn't know who lived in that house, but, but I hoped everything was alright. I pulled open the mailbox and inside there was a single black envelope with the letters M.K. stamped in red on the top right corner. I had forgotten completely that I was expecting a delivery from the website today. I went back inside and tore open the envelope, which contained a small USB drive. I took the USB to my room and debated whether it was worth the risk to plug it into my computer or not. And after a few seconds of thinking, I decided to plug it in. When I did, a folder opened up on my computer with an mp4 file inside named Honey, I'm Home. I double-clicked the file and my media player began playing the video. The video was stark and fuzzy with no sound and I could see a faint light slowly start illuminating the video which I soon realized was a car's headlights. And once the headlights got closer, I noticed that I was looking at a driveway to a home. I could see the corner of a garage door at the bottom right of the video. The camera was hung above the garage and was angled down in order to see anyone who could be approaching the house. The headlights continued to get brighter and brighter until the car pulled into the driveway. It was a large black Cadillac SUV. It parked and the headlights shut off making the video look much more darker, but I could still see well enough. The door to the SUV popped open, and a man wearing a suit got out of the vehicle. I could barely see his face, but I could tell that he was a middle-aged man who obviously had a good paying job. He closed the driver's side door and opened the back door, and as he reached in the back seat, presumably to grab something, a large man crept into frame. He was dressed in all black and had a hoodie on that covered the majority of his face from the camera. He had his hands in the pocket of his sweater and walked up behind the man who was still digging in the back seat of his car. The hooded man grabbed the businessman by the shoulder and spun him around to face him. The man in the suit put his hands up in submission, but the hooded figure pulled the large knife from his pocket and plunged it into the man's stomach multiple times. He pulled the knife up through the man's body and the suit jacket he had on opened up. And even through the semi-blurry video, I could see that the white undershirt that the man had on turn almost completely red. The businessman fell to his hands and knees and necks to the vehicle. The hooded man then grabbed him by the neck, leaned up his head against the vehicle and proceeded to slam the car door into his head multiple times until his head was a flattened bloody mess. Again, I was entertained by the video. It was actually easier to detach myself from this poor guy because the camera quality was not very good and I couldn't see the expressions on his face. I texted David to let him know that the exclusive video had come in. No response. I pulled the USB out of my computer and set it on my desk. I made myself a microwave dinner and then turned on the TV. I almost never watch TV and the last thing my mom watched before she left was the news, so that's what what came on. The banner below the news anchor read, Man brutally murdered in front of home in the name of my community. 
and I remember the cop cars and ambulance that I had seen earlier, and knew that must have been where the killing happened. It wasn't until the news anchor went into detail that I came to a terrifying realization. A man was found dead in his driveway last night with multiple stab wounds and massive blunt force trauma to the head. The man's identity has been confirmed by his wife, father of two, and loving husband. If you have any information that will help in the ongoing investigation, please call our tip line, the anchor stated. I immediately sprang up from the couch and ran to my room to find the USB drive. I grabbed it and plugged it into my computer as fast as possible, and my hands were shaking. I double-clicked on the folder where the video had once been, and now it was gone. I thought, maybe I had deleted or removed it by accident. I searched every folder in my computer, but it was nowhere to be found and I panic and scrambled to find the envelope that the USB had come in, and luckily, it was still close to the top of my trash bin. I pulled it from the bin and examined it for the second time. I hadn't noticed when I first saw it, but the envelope had no stamp. It wasn't mailed, it was hand-delivered. I picked up my cell phone to call the police, but I hesitated. What if the police thought it was me? Even if they didn't, could I get arrested for going on the dark web? After all, it was most likely my fault that this man was murdered because of this stupid subscription. And before I could make a final decision, it seemed like one was made for me. My phone vibrated in my hand with a new email notification. I click on the notification and the email filled my screen. In big, bold letters, the email said, Do not go to the police. Your subscription has been cancelled. I scrolled down a bit and noticed that there was an attachment with the email, and after opening the attachments, I was hit with a sense of dread that made all the hairs on my body stand up. It was a photo of me taken from my kitchen window, and I was sitting on the couch, microwave dinner in hand, and the news was on the TV. This photo had been taken just a few minutes before I received the email. At this point, I was terrified, but in hopes that this person would leave me alone, I decided not to call the police. I made sure all the doors and windows were locked, closed all the blinds, turned off every light in the house, grabbed a knife from the kitchen, and locked myself in the room. The night came and I was too frightened to go to sleep, and I put my phone on silent to avoid any noise and laid down, staring up at the ceiling listening for the slightest noise. At some point, my body gave in and I fell fast asleep. I woke up to the sound of dishes suddenly clanking together. I sat up in bed and listened for a while longer until I heard what sounded like a chair being dragged lightly across the floor. I got up slowly and grabbed the knife that I had left on my bedside table. My stomach was in knots and I had already broken out into cold sweats as I reached for my door. And locking it caused a small click that in that moment, it sounded like the loudest noise that I have ever heard. I pulled the door open and peeked my head around the door frame into the hallway. I looked towards the living room, but it was much too dark to see anything that far away. I stepped out into the hallway, taking each step as lightly as possible. My heart pounded, as if it was trying to escape my body. The door to my mother's room was still close like it had been since she left, and I managed to make it to the living room, but I did not want to turn the lights on and notify anyone of my presence, if they weren't aware already. I glanced over at the door and noticed that there was a chair propped up against the handle that I hadn't put there. I had almost no time to comprehend what was meant before I was grabbed from behind 
and a hand was clamped over my mouth. The knife had almost slipped from my grasp, but I was able to hang on to it. I turned it around in my hand so the blade was facing behind me, and I swung it back as hard as I could into the attacker's leg, causing him to let out a loud cry in pain. He loosened his hold on me, and I saw that he had a knife of his own. He began trying to say something, but he was interrupted when I yanked the knife from his leg, turned around and set it deep into his stomach. He then let out a large gasp, and his arms dropped to his side. The man fell to his knees, and then face down to the ground. I rushed to find the light switch, and after a few seconds of feeling around in the dark, I found it. I flipped the light and looked down at my hands. They were covered in blood. So was the light switch, and so was the knife. I turned to face my attacker. He looked much smaller than the man that I had seen in the driveway video, but he did have a black hoodie on. I grabbed the man by the arm, turned him over onto his back, and what I saw froze me in shock. The person who attacked me inside my home was David. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Why would he do something like this? Was he going to kill me? We'd known each other since third grade, and he wouldn't want to hurt me. Tears began to stream down my face that I had just killed my best friend, and I had no idea what was going on. After what felt like hours of thinking and crying, I decided it was finally time to call the police and explain what occurred here. When I stumbled into my room and picked up my cell phone to make a call, my crying only intensified. There, on my screen, was a text message from David sent just an hour ago. Hey man, I don't know how to explain this, but... Someone is after us. I'm sorry. I'm heading over there now. I have the key you gave me. We'll be more safe if we're together. Read the text message. Just then, I received two emails from the encrypted address, and I selected the first one. There was a link inside, and I couldn't open the link from my phone, so I powered on my computer and typed it into the Tor browser. It opened up the dark web page Mercy Kill that David and I had been browsing a few days earlier and took me directly to a video. The video was in glowing green night vision and the camera was hidden in a high place. I instantly recognized my own living room and I knew what was coming next. I saw myself stab David in the leg and the stomach. I saw him crumble to the ground slowly, creating a puddle of blood, and the video was titled, Oops. And just below it, there was a banner that said, Thank you for your submission. At this point, my sadness became anger, and I swore that I would get revenge on whoever forced me to do this to my best friend. I snatched my phone from the desk and proceeded to open the other email. This email had an attachment. I clicked on it, and a picture opened up. I turned my phone on its side, and the picture enlarged on my screen. The photo was of me. I was on my knees beside David's body, hands covered in his blood, tears running down my face, and what disturbed me the most was the angle that the photo was taken from. It was from a different vantage point than the video. The only way anyone could have taken this picture was from inside the house in the hallway. And as I started putting pieces of the puzzle together, I heard the door to my mother's room creak open. Hello everyone, it's your creepy sister here. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate each and every one of you. But I would also like to thank my amazing patrons, my top tippers, and my dearest channel members. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it with all of my heart. 
If you want to support the channel further, you could also choose to become a patron, a tipper, or a channel member. But remember, it's appreciated, but never a requirement. I would also like to announce that we have merch now. The link is in the description of the video, along with all my other social media links, like my Discord server, Twitter, Instagram, and others. You can connect with me and send your stories there. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and comments are highly appreciated. And remember, your fear feeds me.